Good day all. I just thought I'd quickly run through uh, a little bit of a painting video and show you how I paint these AB Dutch. Uh, so to start off with, I've got Cantor Blue uh, and I'm just going to paint all the blue areas. You don't have to be too neat at this point because uh, you'll t we'll tidy all this up later. So it's just getting the blue everywhere that you want it. Make sure you get deep in there so when you put the ink in you don't have to worry about highlighting that bit and i'm kind of working from the inside out with this model so getting all the deeper areas done first like the blue uh, and working out so like you know i'll do the backpacks and water bottles and all that last so I'll crack on and paint all of these. I say you don't have to be too neat at this stage. It's just getting the blue on. I'll paint all these. I'll come back to you when I do the next color. So as you can see, I've done all the blue. I've got it all over the face and all over everything, but it doesn't matter because we'll tidy it up as we go. So next thing to do is I'm going to do the brown for the backpacks and the muskets. And what you're trying to do here is just pop this on and this time you have to be a little bit neater so just avoid anything that you've already painted blue uh, and get this brown on so i'll do the backpacks make sure you water your paint down i'm just using flat earth for this vallejo uh, Again, don't worry if you go over areas that you're going to need to paint a different colour later. It's not a problem. We'll tidy that up as we go. So I'll paint all the brown. All the brown now. So now we're going to go on to the London grey. We're going to paint all the great coat rolls and all the trousers. Uh, again, make sure you water your paint down a little bit. Uh, and we're just going to get in all these areas again. You don't have to be too neat. Just make sure you don't get anywhere that you've already put blue or anywhere you've already put brown. So when you're doing the great coat roll, just be neat along that edge there. So I'll crack on and do all these. So all of that is done now. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the black. Oops, I'm gonna put black gray on. Uh, the hat and the ammo pouch. Again, water your paint down slightly. Uh, so I'm just gonna paint all the hat, avoiding the feather. Don't worry about any bits that are gonna be uh, like the shako plate. Just paint over that, we'll catch that later. Cause the gold will actually cover over the black better than it will this gray. Uh, yeah, I might even catch the hair. Uh, so that bit and the ammo pouch. So I'm going to crack on and do all of these. Okay, so that's all the black grey on. Uh, I did also do the boots at this point as well, which I forgot to mention. So that's all your main big colours. Uh, and I'm quickly going to run through all the other colours that I'm going to use rather than just showing you. Because it's a bit pointless really. So the the bread bag, which is just here, that's going to get done with skeleton bone. The water bottle, which sits above it, will get done in deep sky blue. Uh, there's a little cockade on the top of the hat, just above the gold. That's going to get done in flat red. I will then go over and put the flesh on the hands and the face. Then finally I'll get some metallics and I will do the uh, plate mail metal and I'll do the banner and then I'll just run a line down there, down the front there uh, for the banner and do the match lock, whatever it's called, flint lock. Uh, and finally for the painting base coating, I'll put old gold uh, and that'll be on the little shako plate. Once that's all dry, the whole thing gets a strong tone ink all over everything. 
uh, and I'll get back to you when I've got that strong tone ink on uh, and we'll start the highlighting process. Uh, so just a little note uh, for anyone that's watching thinking this looks terrible. This is for batch painting them. If you just paint them individually or you didn't want to use an ink, then you have to be a lot neater with all your base coats. You've got to make sure you get them all right. Because we're using this, that's going to give me all the black lines and it's going to tone all the shades down so they're a little bit darker and that'll give me my deep tone. So that's why we're doing it this way. And I will now get back to you when I start the highlighting process. Put the last of the base colors on, I thought I'd just quickly show you. Uh, I was going to put ink all over these, but I had a bit of a problem with my strong tone wash on my cavalry. And I've got the same problem again. Can you see how shiny that is? Now this has been left for over an hour now to dry. And it is unbelievably annoying. This is supposed to be matte. And despite the fact that I'm going to be able to paint over most of this, it is going to leave horrible shiny lines like it has on my cavalry. Um, and if you look at the can't really see because it's getting pretty dark in here. But the Shakos, I just paint black grey and then I put the wash over. I don't have to highlight them then. But now, because this is shiny, it's going to need repainting or it's just going to look awful. So I'm going to have to call a halt to these until I can get some new strong tone ink. I might even email Army Painter about this. Anyway. Uh, once we get some new strong tone ink, I'll carry on with this painting demonstration. But for now, I'm going to have to stop. And of course, for you, it'll only be a matter of a second when I put the camera back on. But for me, it's going to be a few days. So I think it's been about two weeks. Uh, and Army, I contacted Army Painter. Uh, and they very kindly sent me a new strong tone ink and um, a brush on matte varnish. So I think that was a great, a great customer service. Uh, it, it only really took so long because of this, this COVID malarkey. So it takes a lot longer for anything to get posted or as you're probably all aware. Anyway, so we're moving on to the highlight of the blue. We're gonna use just a creep blue straight over the top of this. And uh, what you're aiming to do here is just put a dab on the top of the arm couple of dabs on the bottom, a bit in there, just a subtle one, don't have to make too much of a mess because you're going to paint the cross belts later, and then top of that arm, and just there because the cuffs are going to be a different colour, um, <clears throat> and then on the backs of the arms, just go down there, pull it all the way down, and this one will do the top, just the line there, and, and don't forget the epaulets because they are blue. Okay, so that's the blue, and that's all you do with the blue. Um, so I'm going to crack on, do the rest, and I'll get back to you. So what we're going to do now is the trousers. Uh, and for this I'm using London Grey and uh, we're just gonna pick out most of the areas we're leaving a little bit of shading in some of the you know the recesses I don't know if it's coming out alright on camera and then we're gonna go over this once more oh, spill a bit there anyway. uh, once more with the mix of London Grey and White Grey. I'm not sure if the light came out on camera very well. I'll try and get on the back. If I lower it down a bit. So we're just looking at leaving some lines. Just so you get a nice little bit of a contrast. Like that. Oh yeah, don't forget the blanket roll. Oops. And the blanket roll doesn't get highlighted, it just stays 
blonde and grey. Right. So I'll move on to the next. Well, I'll get all these done, then I'll come back to you with the next highlight. All the London grey on. So what I've got now is a mixture of London grey and light grey. That's 60-40. And when I put this on, it's going to look really bright. But it does darken down a lot. And um, we're just picking out like a few lines here and there. Uh, just to give a bit of a highlight to this. London grey. So you've still got the dark recesses. And this will, this will, as I say, this will dull down. So when you first put it on, you're like, whoa, that's dull. Uh, but it does, it does get better. It does get lighter. Sorry if I'm blocking out what I'm painting. Uh, I've got to keep turning the model to get the right angle. Uh, and then just follow it around the back. Put a little bit of a dab in the middle there. Put a line there. You're just picking out little areas where you want a little bit of a highlight. And that's pretty much it. And then as that dry, you see it's starting to dry now on the front and it's already dulling down quite nicely. So it won't look quite so stark. So I just, as an example, this is what it'll look like when it's all finished because it does dull down I've got one that I painted earlier here we go so I might add a tiny bit of London grey to that because it is a little bit bright so I'm going to crack on do the rest of these and I'll get back to you next up let's get some paint on my brush I should have done that before really uh, we're going to do the brown uh, now this might appear a little bit light um, for the muskets and stuff, but once it's only a highlight, so we're just going to get all these little bits like this, avoiding the metal bits. A bit more paint. I should move the paint palette to the other side, shouldn't I? So oh, a little dab on there. Time on there, and then on the backpacks, uh, just a bit in there. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, all right. Uh, and then just picking out in between all the strapping. So we've still got a lot of dark brown showing, or the darker brown, I should say. So something like that. So I'll crack on to all of them. Next up are the bread bags. Again, Jim put paint on already, sorry. Um, so what we're doing with the bread bags is just putting some more skin and bone on. And again, leaving some of the other areas just so they've got, still got some of the original colour. So I'll just a little dab on that corner. So crack on with all of them. So next up we're going to do the water bottles. Uh, right. uh, and we're just going to go over these with deep sky blue. Just catch the top of it. Just trying to do dots around the edge just to break it up a bit. Oops, a bit on there. And then a circle in the middle. And that's pretty much it for them. Next up, we're going to do the flesh. So we'll start on the face. So what we're trying to do here is just catch the nose and the cheekbones. Put a dab under the chin, his cheekbone, and then if you can, just a little line under the nose. And the hand, we just paint all of the back of the hand. Catch it, oh, catch it 
Ich hab gerade so getan. And this hand. It's, it's gonna be at this scale, it's gonna be really tricky to actually get the fingers. Remember, with 15 mil or 18 mil, uh, you're just going for the overall mass look effect rather than individual models. So, just in case I didn't get it right first time, we'll try it now. Don't know if your fingers and thumbs are in the way. Nose. Cheekbone. See ya. Down a tiny bit. Chin. And his cheekbone. A little bit under there. To get a general idea, I'll crack on with these. So I'll put the flesh base on. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight the flesh. And I'm going to use flat flesh for this, for Leo. Uh, it just I mean, you don't have to do this bit, but I just think it gives them a bit of a lift. So what we're going to do is just catch the nose, tops of the cheekbones, like that, a little dab on the chin, just like that. It just gives the, the face a bit more of a lift. So you don't have to do this. I'm just going to catch the top of the knuckles there, the top of the thumb. Up the knuckles and along that finger. Like that. And that's it. So I'm going to crack on with all of them. So next up, we're just going to do the little cockade thing that's on the hat. I forgot to load my paintbrush up again. So it's just that. I'll try and get it on camera. Just that tiny little dot there. I'm just going to put a dab of flat red on there. That's it. Uh, and I will put an even tinier dot of scarlet on that afterwards. Let's get the scarlet. Just give it a tiny highlight. Probably completely unnecessary, <laughs> but I am going to do it. Putting the scarlet on now. Um, it probably won't make a lot of difference, to be honest, because I'm just putting like little dots like that. Uh, but it makes me happy. Next up, we're going to get onto all the strapping and stuff, and this is what's going to bring the model to life a bit more now. Uh, let's try and get my fingers out of the way. So we want to do the cross belt. Cross there. And that one. I'm doing this with light grey. I would normally use sky grey, but I've run out. It's got a bit that goes around here. Then this is a flank company guy, so he's got bigger shoulder epaulet things. Uh, we're going to do the hat plume. Feather, whatever you want to call it. Like that. Um, we're not going to pick out on, on the jacket. It's a little white line that goes across there and down there. We're just going to do that in white at the end. Um, for now, we're only picking out the bits where we want to get a bit of a bit of shading on. So the collars. Um, don't know if you can be able to see this on camera. Just colour around there. Probably not. Uh, and then the other areas, of course, are the backpack. So you want to get these straps on the backpacks. This oh, wobbed it a bit down there, Got a strap there, strap there. Uh, I don't know how much of that you saw, hopefully, some something. Uh, and finally, the, the rifle strap. So, we'll just do that. Oh, of course, he's got more piping on his shoulder than like that. Uh, oh, also the cuffs. Oh, far too much paint on. Sorry, my thumb's in the way. So, 
just the cuffs. So all of them bits, uh, and I'll crack on do them all, and then we'll put the white on. So we, now what we're going to do is put the white on all these cross belts and straps and bits and pieces. Uh, and this for me is a bit that really brings the model to life. Um, so let's try and attempt to do this on camera. We're going to just put the white down here. This is Vallejo Off-White. I never use pure white. Put the strap there. Just leave tiny bits of grey showing at each end. Like that. Same with the collar, collar that side, and then with the plume, we we're just gonna dob a bits of white here and there, spin it around, just dob it on. So we've got bits of grey showing through still. Blob. Uh, and then on the backpack. Um, Dab on there. And there isn't a knot on top of that one, so we're just going to put a line through there. And a little line through that one. And with the straps, we're going to put a line there. Dab on that bit, dab on that bit, line on that bit. Should really get some more paint on my brush. That bit, that bit. That's it for the backpack. And we've just got the rifle strap, uh, rifle musket strap. Just got one line down there. Um, and then we just got to get the back of the collar. I don't know if this is going to be able to get the angle. Obviously, trying to avoid the hat. there so we've got the collar and the white cuffs again just try you can leave a little bit of grey showing with these because that gives you you know a nice little low tone in there do this one and then we've got the tricky bit which is this white line Try and be as steady as we can. Come in both ways. Like that. And just follow that down like that. And then when you paint the buttons on there, um, that will hide a bit of the mistakes that I've made. So you go. Uh, and remember again, with these 18 mil, we're going more for the mass army look than we are the individual soldier. But uh, that's it. So all that remains on this guy now is just to do the metal work. Uh, and so I'll go back to you when I start that. Uh, just one extra thing. When you're doing the flank company, obviously they've got these bigger shoulder pads. So when you paint these, rather than doing a solid line, just a little dabs like that, leaving a tiny bit of the, the grey showing through. Uh, and it just gives that, you know, look of not being a solid piece of material. So the last couple of pieces to do are the silver and the gold. So the silver you just want to get the bayonet. And I like to leave a little bit dark at the bottom. And do that all the way around. I've seen people on these metal miniatures just scrape off the paint and just have the bare metal to give it that nice shine. I don't like to do that. I'm just going to catch the barrel. That's it. Catch the flintlock. Tops of these gold hoops. That one. That's the silver down. So I could crack on do all of them and show the gold. So the very last thing is just the gold and you've got the shako plate. Just want to put a little dab on there. Like that, leave a bit of the shading. 
and then the buttons which are tricky and that's it and that is a completed 80 mil AB Dutch polyonic guy I've got to get all these base parts. I'm going to do that in a separate video show how I base them all but basically they're going to end up something like that so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I uh, hope it was helpful to some of you I say it's not the be all and end all I'm not a pro painter I'm just trying to give you a couple or show a couple of tips that I use and how I paint uh, and if it's helped some people great um, and I will catch you all in the next one there's a cavalry one coming up after this and I'll be concentrating more on the horses than I will the actual men themselves um, so yeah just to give you an idea how to paint horses in this or how I paint horses in this scale anyway waffled on long enough uh, catch you in the next one <laughs>